of my business calculus people. Special shout out to my homie Jack Meyer. He is the one who requested this video. The video is being made for you and I wish you the best in your studies, my friend. Now, Jack and all the other business calculus people at home, take a look. We have a function, c of x, presented before us here. Its output is the amount of dollars you make for x coats being produced. So, it means if I produce one coat, okay, one coat would produce the amount, the amount, the cost of producing one coat would, I would replace x here in each of these and that would tell me what the cost of making one coat is, okay? If I want to know what the cost of making a hundred coats is, I would replace all the x's here with a hundred, okay? But that's not what we want to do. The question asks us, find a rate of change model, okay? This is c of x and we want to find the rate of change of this function, dc dx, okay? The rate of change model, if we have c of x here, d dx, this is called the differential operator, it just means take the derivative of your function c of x, which is equal to dc dx. That's the dc dx here in part b. Find and interpret dc dx when x is equal to 75. Okay, we'll get to this part right here. But first, let's calculate dc dx. Okay, that is when we do the power rule on this function here. Okay, notice that I can rewrite the above as the this. I'll do my ddx. This symbol just means take the derivative of. Okay, the three zero one nine point five plus one point one six x. Minus, here's where I'm going to start modifying stuff. I'm going to put that 7.8, that's dandy, but I'm going to change that square root of x to the x to the 1 half. So that I can do the power rule appropriately, I want to bring the powers down. When it's just a radical, you really can't tell. Furthermore, notice that this x is down here in the denominator. We want to make it expressed as a negative power, x to the negative 1. So that now we can do the power rule appropriately. We want to have explicit value for its powers. Since it's in the denominator, that's the same thing as x to the negative one power. Now this ddx comes in and it hits each piece. When it hits this piece, this is just a pure number. It's just a constant and the derivative of a constant is zero. So this equals zero for this piece. For this piece, now we do the power rule. 1.16 times the power, which is one, it comes down, okay, times x to the zero, because that's just one minus one. Okay? So, since it's just one minus one, it's x to the zero of power. X, anything to the zero of power is one. So it's just gonna be one. This whole thing becomes one as well. Because it's the same thing as x to the zero. So all you, all that remains is just this, this piece right here just becomes one. One times one times 1.16 is just 1.16 again. So that all that remains is 1.16 over here. Minus 7.8, about to do the power rule here. We bring the power down, which is this 1 half, and then we say x to the 1 half minus 1. We have to subtract by 1 each time, okay? Now this guy, we bring this 2 fifths here, and we bring this power down, minus 1, times x to the minus 1, minus one power, okay? Because it was a minus one and then we had the minus one again. Now let's regroup and see what we have. This zero is zero, this 1.6 just becomes a one point, this 1.16 just becomes a 1.16. All of this becomes 1.16. This becomes minus 7.8 divided by two, because of this one half, times x to the negative one half, okay? Because a half minus one is negative one half. Okay, this right here gets a negative sign on it because that minus one. So this becomes two fifths x to the negative two. Okay, so now this is our derivative. This is dc dx. We found our derivative, okay? This is the derivative. Now we can do a little bit more. Notice that this negative one half power means it's really to the one half power in the denominator. And anything to the one half power is just the square root of that. 
So I can rewrite this as 1.16 minus 7.8 divided by 2 times 1 over square root of x. Okay? Because x to the 1 half is equal to the square root of x, and x to the negative 1 half is equal to 1 over square root of x. And that's why we're doing that. Okay? That's where that 1 over square root of x is occurring. Next, this x to the negative 2 really becomes 1 over x to the positive 2 in the denominator. In the denominator. Okay? That's the cost of that negative sign in the numerator if you want to remove this negative sign. Well, you got to go downstairs. Okay? So now, this is the derivative. This is the rate of change model right here. This is part A. Find the rate of change model. This is part A and we're done. If you want to write it in a very, very compact form without this stuff going on, without that one being there, without that one being there, this would be 1.16 minus uh, 7.8 divided by 2 square root of x minus 2 over 5x squared. This would be dc dx. This would be a much more simplified version. But either way, that is correct, and so is this. This is part A. So I'll pause it and record it and look at it or whatever. Whatever is up to you. This is a video. Now I'm going to erase this, and we're going to determine um, what uh, part B is. So I'm just going to erase everything but the final expression that we worked so hard to establish. So let's erase all this stuff here. Let's erase all this stuff here. Okay. All right. And let's erase this stuff. Okay. All right. Now that we're done erasing, Let's talk about part B. Find and interpret dc dx when x is equal to 75. Dude, all that means is replace x with 75 in this equation. Okay? Replace x with 75 in this equation. dc dx, okay, is equal to all this stuff. And when x is equal to 75, just replace every x you see with the 75. Okay? Whatever that is numerically, that is what you get for part B. Okay? Alright? Now it says round to the hundredth place and interpret it. Okay? First, let's figure out what it is. I'm going to plug it in into my online calculator here. So we got 1.16. Okay? And we got minus 7.8. Let me pull up a calculator here. So we got 1.16 minus 7.8 divided by 2 times square root of 75. And I know you probably are done doing this at home, but I'm just going to double check you. Okay, 1.16. Let's see if our answers agree. Uh, minus 7.8 divided by square root of 2 times root 75. Okay, got to keep going. Minus 2 divided by 5 times 75 raised to the second power. Okay, what, what, what's this one? So I get 0 0.0709. 0 0.709. What are the other digits here? 0 0.70959. 0 0.59. Okay. Let me double check that. 0 0.709595. Okay. The problem wants us to round to the hundreds place. 
tens, hundreds of place. So this is approximately 0 0.71. Okay? Now let's interpret it. This was the rate of change model. This is dc dx. It is the original function c of x. It tells us what is the cost per, the output is not money. What is the cost in terms of dollars of the number x coats? So if I sell x coats, what is the cost of that? The output is that. Now, when we take the rate of change, it's how fast is the cost changing with respect to the number of coats. So dc dx is the rate of change of cost with respect to, to the number of coats. So as I change the number of coats, that's what this represents. So this is saying at 75, x equals 75 coats being produced, The cost DC, the cost is uh, the rate of change of the cost. The rate of change is increasing. Since the derivative evaluated at 75 is a positive number, 0 0.71. It's positive 0 0.71. So the cost is, the rate of change of the cost is going up as you're producing at 75 number of coats. Okay? So that is your question, Mr. Jack. If any of you also have questions at home, please do not hesitate to leave a comment in the comment section or send me an email.